law of reflection and law of refraction using Huygens principle. So we are using Huygens principle to prove law of reflection and law of refraction because we haven't proved it when we study ray optics. Fine. Now we are proving it using Huygens principle. Fine. So first, oh, we keep it Huygens principle only. The heading. We will first prove law of reflection. Write down. Okay, so suppose this is a mirror. Fine. I am pro proving what? Law of reflection, so there has to be some reflection happening. Fine. So what I assume that a ray is coming like this, or let us say a beam of light is coming like this. So what kind of wavelength I have? Planar wave. If I do not have planar wave, can I say that angle of incidence is same? Angle of incidence will be different. Isn't it? If it is not a planar wave, suppose it is spherical. Suppose the point source is there. So it will emit light everywhere. So light will reach like this, 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 everywhere. So angle of incidence will be different. In order to keep angle of incidence uniform, I have to take planar. This thing. Fine. So assume that the this is the uh, wavefront of the wave that is hitting the mirror. If you have any doubt, please ask because this is slightly counterintuitive. Till now we have studied reflection in terms of rays. First time we are studying reflection in terms of wavefront. Fine. So this is the wavefront. This is incident wavefront. Fine. Can you represent here where is angle of incidence? Show where is angle of incidence. Huh? No, actually make some construction and find out. You may know it already, but don't remember such things. Do it your own. How we define angle of incidence? Angle between incident ray and normal. Where is normal here? This is normal and where is incident ray? Incident ray is a direction of velocity which is perpendicular to the wavefront. Getting it? So this is incident angle I. Fine. If this is I, this angle will be 90 minus I and this will be I. So this is incident angle. Fine. Let's say this is point number 1 and this is point number 2, this point. Okay? Fine. What is the direction of motion of point 2? How it moves? Perpendicular. Perpendicular to the wavefront. Right? So it will move perpendicular to the wavefront like this and will travel in this direction. And suppose it fits here. This is suppose point number 3. Okay? So by the time point number 2 reaches point number 3, where this point number 1 goes? Can you represent it? Suppose this is distance d. Can you draw it on your own? Where this point number 1 will be? If point 2 travels d distance, how much point 1 will travel? d only? Will the speed be different after reflection? Speed will be same because same medium. Fine. So if this travels d distance, this will also travel d distance. Are you getting this point? So if I say that I draw any random line d distance, I have drawn like this. This is d distance. Then I say that okay, this is uh, no, I'll just a little bit. This is suppose 4, then I say there is this point number 4. Okay, this point number 4 and what distance is also D. Okay, now same line I could have also drawn like that. You know, I could have said that this is D and this is 4. Are you getting my point here? 
So just knowing distance D is not enough. Can you tell me what should be this angle? How much it should be? Think of it. Tell me. So uh, four and three four. Three four is basically the new wave right? And this is the direction of propagation, so that should be ninety degrees. Ninety degrees. Are you getting the point? This is the direction of propagation of wave, and this is a new wave three to four. So it should be ninety degree. So we have to ensure that when this line comes and this line connects, this angle should be ninety degree. Are you getting this? It should be ninety degree. So how to ensure that? There is a geometrical construction for this. For that, what you do? You take D distance as a radius and draw an arc. Fine. If you draw an arc, and when you connect, see the distance of any point on this arc will be D from one. Are you getting this? But if you connect a tangent from here, and then you connect this, then I can ensure that this is 90 degree. Fine. So this is how you ensure that it becomes 90 degree. You take an arc of D, draw it like this, and then draw tangent and connect this. Getting it? So this is now distance D. This is a new wavefront. This is one four. So one to two is older wavefront, and three to four is new wavefront. Or three to four is reflected wavefront. And one to two is incident wavefront. Fine. Can you show inch, the reflected angle is where? Where is reflected angle over here? So, so we keep This. This angle is reflected angle. Fine. So this is R. Now, if this is R, this will be 90 minus R. This is 90 minus R and this is 90. How much will be this? R. Okay. Now, can you prove I is equal to R? Similar triangles. Similar okay, congruent triangles. This side is common. This is 90 degrees. And distance what else? Distance is D. And DD. Okay? So these two angles automatically becomes equal. Okay? So we have proved law of reflection using Huygens principle. Okay? Now we are going to prove law of refraction. The, the first law of refraction. That is Snell's law using Huygens principle. Any doubt on this? Right on, law of refraction using Huygens principle. Now the light will not reflect and be, and be in the same medium. Light will change the medium. And if light changes the medium, the speed changes. So by the time a particle travels a distance d, other particle may travel lesser distance. Okay? So let us say that this is the interface okay this is the interface and this is the incident wavefront this one one two this is the incident wavefront let us say this is for the sake of simplicity we can say this has reflective index one and this has reflective index of mu okay in your book they have taken uh, you take an angle into <laughs> Yeah, they have taken N1 and two. So we will also take N1 and two. So this is effective next N1, this is effective next N2. Okay? Let's assume for the sake of convenience that N2 is greater than N1. Okay? Now the direction of motion of 2 is what? 
perpendicular it reaches here this is point number 3 ok can I say this is the incident angle I same thing fine you can check similarly that this angle is angle of incidence ok now by the time 2 reaches 3 suppose this is a distance D where 1 will reach it will go down right it will not reflect now so where it will be can you try to do this I mean, you see, the speed in second medium will be, of course, less. Right? And you can assume V1 is, in, V1 is the velocity in medium 1. What will be the velocity in second medium? So like that. principle is high principle. 